Thomas Tukio is insisting on joining Manchester United. He has refused to stay at Bayern Munich. The fans of Man United don't like him. Ineos is confused. Dilemma. Meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag is welcoming back almost all his players for the FA Cup finals. He is admitting there will be a selection dilemma for him. Another one. Ineos have, have been waiting and hoping that by the time we get into the summer transfer window, Dan Ashworth will be there. Guess what? Newcastle United are saying, hold on a minute. So Ineos cannot make any moves without Ashworth for the summer transfer window. Dilemma. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the United Hot Spot. Oh my goodness. Subscribe because this update is going to be an interesting one. The season is nearly done. One last game and we call it a wrap. But first of all, we should all just go down to our knees and thank the man above for what has been a season of enduring that he has given us the grace to be able to endure what has been a painful season. How did you do it? By the way, congratulations to you, United supporters out there, for, do, for making it. Honestly, it hasn't been easy. It has been God. <laughs> anyway, so here is the wrap-up of the Man United news today. So uh, Ineos are still waiting to make a decision. Now, Fabrizio Romano seems to suggest that Eric Ten Hag's job might partly, partly depend on uh, the performance at the, at the FA Cup. But all these are ways of them trying to buy time because they honestly don't have a clear option. There is no clear solution. Had looked to Zinedine Zidane, who probably you know said, I am not having it. So right now, they are, they are confused. Uh, Thomas Tukio was the next option, but uh, the fans don't seem to like him. And it is said that they had a first contact with him. So it seems he was high on the agenda, like we said here. Uh, on their radar. He was high on their radar. But the fans still not like him. And, and in your snow, they need to get well get off or, or, or well with the fans. Because if, if they are going to come off a good start, the fans have got to be packing them. Now, it's certainly not happening with Thomas Tukio. Eric Ten Hag on the other side, they are not sure. They are not sure. Do we keep him or not? Fans are a bit divided. So there is a confusion there within us. And this is affecting a lot, including the lack of Dan Ashworth, the inavailability of Dan Ashworth, who's, who's, who's joining of Man United is being delayed by Newcastle. So right now, we are heading into a summer transfer window. We know the, the players we want, like Michael Olise, uh, Joao Neves, uh, uh, are all wanted by other clubs as well. Uh, but uh, we cannot move because we do not have Dan Ashworth, a key guy in the structure. So are we going to move without the structure? Guys, it's a confusion. Confusions galo. Now, the other painful and very interesting confusion going on at Man United are the contracts the players have. I was listening to a former footballer at Man United saying that no Manchester United player, not even Rashford, with a long contract earning more than £300,000 per week, will want to leave the comfort of being in Manchester and go where? Go where? Go to Saudi with your family. You've got kids who are you know, in school. So the players will make it difficult, are already making it extremely difficult for Ineos to let go of them. I've been saying it here before, that players leaving is not entirely about it, not wanting them. These players are contracted. So for you to be able to uh, let go of them, they must, they must be willing to join the team you're selling. The, the classic example was Harry Maguire. You do recall how West Ham wanted him and he refused, yet we wanted to let go of him and we needed money in the last window. He refused to go because he was contracted. So you cannot force him to leave. <laughs> ah, I know the worst case scenario is that even Eric Ten Hag could refuse to go. Well, I, I don't think the manager would, honestly. I'm just, I'm just thinking. I don't know what the rule is. But I, I saw somewhere a talk spot where saying that uh, there is, if I could save, if I could save Eric Ten Hag, I didn't go into the details of what they meant. I'll probably, probably make my research and see whether there is some rule that could stop Ineos from letting go of Eric Ten Hag. But I said it here before that even Eric Ten Hag, if he passed the KPIs, the the, the the objectives he was given when he was joining the club, he wouldn't care whether it was in use. He did not uh, sign with, to work with John Mata as individuals, the club, the institution. He gave me these objectives and I've achieved them. And he seems to have achieved the objectives they told him. Now, if he does, how on earth are you going to be selling, uh, letting go of him just like that? So that dilemma is there. But the most painful one is that of the players because so many players have still got contracts running. The club might not want them. They see them as, or Ineos might see, see them as surplus requirements, but they can't do nothing about them. But anyway, let's talk about the transfer window for a bit because these two 
this, by the way, this conversation is not done. This uh, conversation of these two is not done. Thomas Tuchel is seriously pushing to return to the Premier League and is saying it's either Man United or one other club. Return to the future. What a character. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the transfers. So, Manchester United seem to be seriously interested in Jeremy Frimpong, uh, whereas they know the competition will be there. But again, like I've told you, first mover's advantage is what they would have banked on to be able to go for uh, Jeremy Frimpong. Now, if they are still confused, I think the most important thing for Man United right now is getting letting go of certain players, which has become a problem because certain players they probably thought they would sell early in the summer have no one, no serious team interested. The most of the clubs they have. They, that, that are, are monitoring United players, most, not all, but most are Saudi clubs. Of course, we know uh, uh, Crystal Palace and Fulham are said to be interested in, in uh, uh, Sofian Amrabat. He's not a United player. At the end of his loan, he was, he's a Fiorentina player, so that one is not counted. Uh, Scott McTominay, I definitely think there are clubs in the Premier League that would want to sign Scott McTominay. I, but you wonder uh, which clubs are those. They don't seem to be uh, clear. The rumors should, would have come out. No one is talking about Anthony. Jadon Sancho is earning so much money. United will still have to pay his wages unless he's willing to take a pay cut. I, I, I read somewhere that with Sancho, United won 50 million pounds by the way for Sancho. But I read somewhere that because we, if we don't make it to the Champions League, his wages could go down to about 150,000. Now, I, I need to time to research and, 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 and see how true that is because we've been saying that, that is a huge cut from 350,000 to 150,000 is insane. I, I don't think it's, it could be, there could be a pay cut, but it can't be that much. Uh, more than uh, what, 200,000, uh, just because of qualifying for the Champions League, what kind of negotiation would we have had with the club? Sancho is another one. You know, who is there? Who is going to pay, uh, pay 50 million pounds for Sancho? Dortman want him to stay. They, I don't think they would pay back that money. Mm, so the clubs that would, are Saudi clubs, would Sancho go to Saudi Arabia? Look at all these United players. How many of them would you think? One Bissaka, Scott McTominay, those you want to leave. One Bissaka, Scott McTominay. Some of you want Dalo to leave. I wonder why. I don't know how you view football, but Dalo has been improving. He needs uh, you know, to be given his chance um, for him. Uh, but, uh, okay, you can put him if you want him to go. Uh, you can, I think I mentioned Scott McTominay. Anthony, how many of those kids would want to go to Saudi? Harry Maguire himself, uh, some of you have wanted him to go. But the fact that Varen is leaving, I would think Maguire should stay if he's going to keep fit. But the thing is, Ineos is in a serious dilemma. The state Ineos is in is extremely difficult and confusing. That they have, I think, I, I saw again somewhere uh, someone saying that uh, Sajim Ratcliffe must be sitting and saying, What did I get myself into? <laughs> because the thing is, what's challenging Sajim Ratcliffe mostly are the rules around football. And he admitted it uh, himself. He said, Football is so, these days it's so difficult. Things, you don't just see things from the outside and come change them. The mess we had been sunk in was so deep that undoing it under the current laws of the game, the current regulations of the game, is extremely, extremely difficult. It's bigger, more difficult than managing any of his petroleum, multi-billion pounds uh, petroleum companies. So he will feel what it means to be a man United supporter and understand why we are called the biggest club in the world. So. That's where we are. But the beauty is, one good dilemma is that Eric Ten Hag will have all his... Uh, Harry Maguire as well will be back for the FA, FA Cup final. At least that was what Eric Ten Hag promised. So uh, by 25th for the FA Cup final, there won't be any excuses. We want to see what our best squad... And okay, we know that they, are, they won't be as fit as Man City because they haven't, most of them haven't been playing for a long time. But regardless, this week is enough for them to prepare and try to step up their... Uh, their game so that they give a serious good account of themselves against Man City in the FA Cup final. Now, if it goes south, Ineos might base on that to pull the <coughs> subscribe. My name is Webb. My goodness, what a time! Dilemma after dilemma after dilemma. This isn't good at all.